it is already well established that the overuse or misuse of antibiotics can increase the frequency of antibiotic resistant bacteria in our bodies with sometimes devastating effects on our lives. Antibiotic resistant bacteria have already found their way into the wastewater streams of our cities. Can they also find their way from the cities into the fresh waters of rivers and lakes? What could happen if they do? Scientists from Switzerland and Germany wanted to find out. Nadine Chikalski was one of the principal investigators in a study that was carried out on the shores of one of the largest freshwater reservoirs in Europe. I investigated the sources and the spreading of antibiotic resistant genes and bacteria into Lake Geneva, Switzerland, especially the Reedy Bay, and I was interested in what will happen to them as soon as they arrive there. Nadine and her colleagues took a close look at locations where bacteria may become antibiotic resistant. The hospital, the city canalization system, the municipal wastewater treatment plant. And they took a look at where antibiotic resistant bacteria may end up, the lake. Due to the immense use and also misuse of antibiotics in human and veterinary medicine, there is increasing problems with antibiotic resistance, especially with respect to pathogenic bacteria. However, what's, what is a quite new aspect is that you find resistant bacteria and resistant genes in wastewater, and then the question more and more turned up, so these wastewaters are discharged into the environment. What happens in the wastewater treatment plants? And if nothing really happens, so what will then happen if all this ends up in the environment? To find out, the scientists first collected samples. Wastewater samples from the city, as well as water and sediment samples from the lake. Collecting samples from the lake was the biggest challenge, especially when it came to operating a special corer to take sediment samples from up to 50 meters in depth. First, the scientist had to lower this heavy instrument to the bottom of the lake so it would, with the force of gravity, penetrate the sediment. Then they had to make sure that the corer brings the right amount of sediment back to the surface so that they can conduct further analysis in the lab. Will they find antibiotic-resistant bacteria in their samples from the lake and the city? And will multi-drug-resistant bacteria, particularly dangerous for humans, be amongst them? To answer these questions, bacteria were extracted from the samples collected at each of the test locations. Under sterilized conditions, these bacteria were plated onto different Petri dishes containing different antibiotics. The Petri dishes were then incubated at a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. After a few days, the cultured bacteria were ready to be evaluated and it could clearly be seen that not all of the bacteria had died when exposed to antibiotics. Some had survived. Therefore, some of the bacteria extracted from the samples in the city and the lake were antibiotic resistant. But not all bacteria resistant to antibiotics can grow on a Petri dish. So a second test was necessary to identify them. This test allowed the identification of DNA fragments and sequences of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. The results of the Petri dish and DNA analysis combined showed that antibiotic-resistant bacteria, including multi-drug-resistant bacteria, were found in all of the samples that had been collected, from the city and from the lake. What surprised the scientists was that after passing through the wastewater treatment plant, the proportion of multi-drug resistant bacteria in the treated water had actually increased. How could this have happened? The close proximity of bacteria to each other at the wastewater treatment plants could have been a factor. One or more antibiotic resistant genes could have been transferred from one bacterium to another by three different routes. First, by conjugation. Here, the bacteria are in physical contact with each other. The DNA containing the antibiotic resistant gene is copied into a bacterium that does not have this gene. 
Second, by transformation. Here, a free-floating DNA containing the resistance gene is taken up by chance by a bacterium that does not contain the gene. A third way in which resistance genes are transferred is by transduction. Here, viruses take up the resistance gene from the bacterial DNA and transfer it to other bacteria. Antibiotic resistant bacteria, including multi-drug resistant bacteria, have been found in the waste waters of our cities. And if they're not removed, they can also find their way into the fresh waters of our rivers and lakes. Antibiotic resistant bacteria can multiply and pass their resistance onto new bacteria. What if they don't only do this in the waste waters of our cities, but also in the fresh waters of our rivers and lakes?